Hey guys, this is Chidero, Chidero's Designs, or Chidero's Bling, and today's bracelet was created by Loomer from Norway. This is the Now and Forever bracelet. This is this. So you have two bracelets in one. Um, obviously this is the first step, and then the second step would be adding a border to the outside. So this right here, this whole thing is created on the loom. And after we are done making this, we pull it off. This is what comes off your loom. And then, as I mentioned, we can just simply add a border if you want to the outside. So you have options. So in this bracelet, I used eight millimeter glass pearl beads. Um, they do stick up because technically you would have to go by the thickness. If you don't want your beads to be raised, you would have to make sure your bead is no thicker than um, the bands once loomed. And all of my jump rings are eight millimeter heavy gauged jump rings, okay? So I could go on and on for hours about what kind of bling to use or sizes and whatnot, but this is the rule of thumb. When you wanna use jump rings in your bracelets, um, it's all up to your preference as far as do you want them to move? Do you want them to stay put? Um, it's all going to depend on your band that you use. So for this one here, uh, these are the silk, the pink silk bands. So they are silicone. They are thick bands. So these eight millimeter jump rings fit nice and snug once they are loomed. Now this bracelet, you see how they're a little bit loose. Um, the black in there is a um, opaque black. So opaque being a thin band, you have a lot of wiggle room. So that's gonna depend on what type of jump ring you have. If you only have a certain type of jump ring, like it's not a heavy gauge and it's a very thin jump ring, then if you can, go with your uh, thickest band or even double up your bands. Um, if you don't want to have it a loose. So these two renditions, <clears throat> excuse me, these two renditions here, um, we're just playing around with bead size. Bead size. So this one, um, it has an eight millimeter bead in the middle with two caps, bead caps. So this is probably almost 12 millimeter once completed. So to me, it was too big. So eight millimeter uh, down, is, is probably what would work best in these areas. And you can see it, like this isn't a good example, this one would be a better example. You can see your bling from both sides. So you can see, like I said, that one is about an eight millimeter bead and it kind of pushes out on the design. Another option, if you go on to Loomer from Norway's account, you can see that she did create one similar to this um, bracelet I made of MS Looms uh, where it tight, has a little bit of a bridge. So that's also um, an option as far as adding bling to the center. Okay, so let's get started. The beginning part, as I mentioned, will be made all in the loom and it will be a four pin setup. So you have your first and last at one height, go down one peg and your two center pegs are at the next height. So the one thing that makes this bracelet nice and unique is that we are going to add these jump rings on the loom and loom them. Uh, I've yet to do that. I don't believe I have. So that's what we need to do. So you want to have, um, we're going to put uh, perimeter bands up our loom and in the perimeter band is going to be a jump ring. So there's multiple ways you can do it. Uh, I'll show you a couple ways and then you can pick which way is the most comfortable for you. The easiest way is just to take your band and just pinch it and put it in. I mean, it's that simple. These are, are very large holes. Um, I guess we could put our first couple bands down. So you want to put a band going across the first two pins and then just put your bands going up diagonally as you normally would, and then we start our bling bands. 
and I'm going to have to untwist those when I'm done anyhow. Okay, so uh, I think what would make it easier for you guys to see this. All right, so once you have your uh, jump ring on your band, just simply place it on like you would if there was nothing on your band. It's this really no different. And it doesn't matter where your jump ring sits. We're going to uh, make sure that it is in the right spot whenever we are completely finished with the bracelet. So that is one option on how to add. Another option would be to grab your hook and place it on the hook and just simply slide it on as if it was a cap band. And then once it's on the hook, you just take it and then put it on your loom like that. So it's really easy. It's not anything difficult. Um, jump rings are, are going to be large. So the way I like to do it is since I've been doing this for quite some time is I like to put a million jump rings on my hook like this as many as I can or whatnot. And then I take my bands and it goes a lot quicker. I just stick one band on, grab one jump ring, pull it on the center of that band, and then place it on the peg. Whoops. Well, that wasn't simple, was it now? And then so on and so forth. So you can go ahead, leave your bands or leave your um, jump ring wherever it may lay. Please do not worry about making sure that it is in the middle. So that's what we're going to do the whole way up our loom. I'm going to use two looms in length today, so that would be a full wrap. If you only want to use one loom, just add a chain on to the end, um, as you normally would for your bracelet. So, as I'm sure over the cabillion tutorials that you've seen, the next thing that we say, is we need a bigger st station <laughs> is whatever you do on one side you do on the other side okay I'll do one more super simple step okay so let's have that let's take that all the way up to the second to the last peg and then you're going to put two bands going into the two center uh, pegs. So when we are both done adding all of our bands with our jump rings, then we'll meet back, back here for the next step. Okay, so once we have all of our bands on our loom with a jump ring in the middle of them, we can move on to our second step, which is adding this uh, diamond shape in the center. So you can see here, mine is in the pearl or Egyptian purple or whatever, the same color as my border. Okay, so I am going to be using peach, I think they're peach, but they're uh, Ellie bands. So we want to start with our bottom right peg and we want to go in diagonally one and we want to keep going diagonally until we reach the other side of the loom. So that would be the next one in line. And then like that. So we're gonna make like this little funky X. So we go to the first peg this time, and then we do the same thing. We go in one peg, follow it to the next peg, which is a little bit of a stretch. And then the last one goes to the end pin bar. Okay, so it's like a funky little X. So where you left off is where you're going to begin. So all of these X's will touch. And 
and the next one starts from the other side. All right, so once you have it placed, you can see it's making that diamond kind of shape. And thus you can see on the bracelet. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, finish this up all the way to the end of the loom and it should match up to, um, these should be your last pegs that you have your border bands on. Okay, so let's finish that and we'll meet back down here for our next step. All right, so we have all of those funky little X's placed on our loom. We just have, one, like I consider it maybe one and a half more steps uh, until we start looming. So this next one will just be a sequence of bands uh, placed. And after that, I'm going to have you go ahead and place your bling bands as well. So let me see. I think on this rendition, you can see the background a little bit better. Uh, this one I have uh, silver in it. If you turn it over, you can see it's just a little bit on the sides because uh, this one meshes in better. But this one you can see has a distinct difference. So it's up to you on which you would rather do. So this one here has the silk pink on the border. And then as my uh, diamond bands, I put um, the 600 pack... Um, pearl purple or something and then behind that is the um, glitter pink so you can see that it gave it uh, a bit of a contrast so it would be up to you if you want that or not so super simple we're going to start out on the first two center pegs and you're just going to place one band on both pegs going forward okay and then on we go from where we left off on that center, take it out to the left, go from that same pin back in. So we make like a little V. We do the same thing on this side, going out to the peg that doesn't have one of those wiggly X bands on it. So we're going basically this V will end up in between each one of your X's. So that's the pattern. So we just take and put two more bands going forward and then we just have a V that we're creating like that. So it's not too difficult. I'll do one more and then I'll show you where to put your bling bands. Okay, so you do need to make sure that your bands, your bling bands are on a stretchy. This is a metallic gray, which is like the god band. So where you're going to place your bling band, I put two, I think they're about four millimeter uh, gray pearl beads. And then in the center is a same size little rhinestone spacer. Everywhere you see two uh, horizontal bands, vertical, I'm sorry, that's where your bling would go. So in Loomer from Norway's uh, rendition, she starts hers right here, the first two pegs, and puts hers across like that. So you can do yours like that as well, but I choose, this is just my personal preference, to start with the next set of vertical bands. And the only reason is, is because this is extremely close to the clasp, and so I'd prefer to have mine up one, but it is your choice. So the bling, the bling hole, if you will, is just that space in between, <clears throat> excuse me, those two vertical bands. So mine kind of like just fits. So I know it's going to kind of bump back a little bit for me. So then you would just simply go up to your next set of vertical bands, which is basically jumping two pegs, one group of pegs, two groups of pegs, and then you'll have another 
set of vertical bands. And so you're going to stretch it from the outside to outside pegs where your bling ends up in the middle of the vertical bands. Okay? If it's not definite, if it's not in in the middle, you're, you'll be fine. So we will not be looming these bands. They will only be um, staged, and then every time we loom an, uh, the bands around it, that's what will keep it in place. So we will go ahead and continue going up our loom with this, um, with the two vertical bands, and then making the V's on both sides. And after that, we're going to be adding our bling, if you choose. Obviously, you don't have to put bling if you don't want. And then after we are through doing this, then we will be ready for looping. Okay, so let's finish that up, and then we'll start looping process. Alrighty, I have my loom turned around. And this is what your loom should look like. Okay, so we just have one more band to place, which is a cat band. And that will be placed over these two pins in the center. Okay, so we are going to loom exactly how we traditionally loom, whatever the last layer is that we placed on the loom is the first layer we loom up. So that would be our um, vertical V, vertical V bands. So pick a side, any side. I'm gonna pick the left side. Just grab that band that's on top and bring it forward. The next band goes out for the V and then the V. So you can go up one side and then come back down where you can do them both together. Super simple, traditional looming. Just follow the pattern. On both sides. And as you can see, when you place these two vertical bands, it's the first band that's going to help keep your bling in place. So let me do this V. There we go. So let's go ahead and we will finish that up. Come back down and loom out our X bands. Okay, so we have all of those uh, pattern bands looped. Make sure that they are all pushed down and then our next step is to loom out those funky little X bands. So before we get to the X band we have to go into this peg here and grab that border band and bring it over so it can act as a cap band and do the same thing on this side. Okay. So again, it's just traditional looming. Whichever band is on top in this X right there, that's what band you want to, that's what side you want to start with. So um, this is on top the left side. So I start and do all three of those bands that I placed like that. And then come back down to this side and loom all three. like that okay so again my left side is on top so I want to go in and grab my left and do all three together and then come down and do this side so all of your center bands it should be this uh, band that we're looping right now uh, on your center pegs because we are one step away from pulling it off the loom which traditionally uh, we are going to loom up our border bands but that has some work to do with it 
Um, so make sure that you are grabbing the last band on those center pegs because there will be no more looping of bands after we're done with these X's. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish that up, and next will be our perimeter bands, which we'll have uh, quite a bit of time we're going to spend on those, so we'll meet back there then. Alrighty, now comes the tedious, long part of the bracelet. Yes, it requires work. Um, how I was shown how to do this is how I'm going to do it, because I have not been able to figure out a more a simpler way but what we need to do is we need to go down into this first peg here you might want to watch first before you do and we want to grab that perimeter band now it is off that first peg and in my hook so the object of the game is that we have to put this inside this jump ring and then connect it okay so I want to take it with my right hand and then I want to turn my hook facing me and put it through the jump ring. And then I want to go ahead and put this band on my hook like that. Okay. Now I just have to make it through the jump ring, making sure that the band is not crooked or twisted and then put it on the next peg. So it's the same exact uh, traditional looping except we have to stop, put it through this jump ring, and then attach. So again we go inside and grab the first end of that perimeter band and we want to hold that part so we can get our hook through that jump ring and then put this band on our hook it is through the jump ring and now we can attach so it's not hard it's just very tedious because it's like you know taking it and then taking your hook out putting your hook through all that jazzy stuff and again don't worry about where your jump rings are they're gonna slide around it's okay So if anybody finds a simpler way to do this step, please make sure that you comment below and share with the rest of us. I'd love to know. But I believe this is the first time that I have uh, loomed jump rings. You know, my first bracelet I made, actually, I think it's actually my first or second, was the Arrow Essence. And that was with the first time I used jump rings, but that was on like a couple pegs or the monster tail or something. Do this last one, and then we're going to take a nice long, oh. come on. Ooh, this one just is there we go and if you should happen to lose your band it's not going anywhere because you have so many bands looped on top of these pegs that um, if you pull it out like that and you lose it you'll have time to grab it it's not going anywhere all right so let's go ahead and finish this up I'm not going to show you the other side because it's exactly the same. But when we are complete with this step, then we are ready to pull it off the loom. So after you're done doing all of these, um, at the end of the loom, with our last jump ring being there, 
we just want to take these two bands and bring them into the center and then we can pull it off and you might want to go peg by peg and take it off with your hook but I will meet back here with you um, once I am done with this step and pulled off the loom. All right, we have the border bands loomed up and we took it off our loom. And I hope that you are just as satisfied as I am. This is beautiful. I simply love it. I would 100% most definitely love to keep it as is. Uh, the one thing that I did notice, um, because I did exactly two looms, is that it is just a tad too long. But I am almost positive that once we start the, um, if you are to add a border, the border is going to shorten it up a little bit. So, <clears throat> excuse me, once again, um, if you're going to leave it like this, then you can go ahead and fix it up. And fixing it up, uh, to me, means if you have any twisted bands, please make sure that you untwist them. Um, a big, big thank you to Artisan Loom for really bringing it to our attention. And she's very adamant on not taking your bracelet off the loom and just accepting it. So I am really excited um, that she is is really digging that into us because she is correct many times I've taken it off the loom and I'm like oh yay uh, so anyway I had gone through and I've already changed and untwisted all of my border bands I used LE for these diamond shaped uh, so none of them needed untwisted and really can't see anything below that so my border is going to be the same color that I used for this border. So if you are adding one, you can continue with me. If you are not adding one, um, we thank you for watching and make sure that you um, check out Loomer from Norway in the link below and come join us again. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go down to the cap band, okay, and stick your hook in, and then we just want to chain three. So that's one, two, and three. Okay, after that, and this is how I do it, I like to have it on its side, or I can go up through like this. But we are going to attach uh, our stick our hook through that first jump ring and then we're going to take a band go through the jump ring and the next loop on our hook leaving the other side and close it up and now we're going to take another band and pull everything on our hook on top of this new band and close it up that is what we will do for both sides of the bracelet. So you start out with two loops on your hook, you stick it through the next jump ring in line, and you grab your one band and pull it through the jump ring and the next band on your hook, and then we close it up, and then we grab another band, having everything, all three loops on our hook, on top of the new band so it is a super simple border as far as we've done it quite a few times in, in, in different uh, hook only bracelets okay so I'm gonna go a little faster make sure I'm doing this correctly here get ahead of myself because I'm watching this through the camera this time
You gotta be a little careful because mine are the sticky bands, so make sure they don't twist. But every time you pull it through the loop, through the jump ring, you are incorporating onto the bracelet. And then by taking just that first loop, you are joining it to what we already have. And then we close it up. And then we want to move forward. And in order to do that, we need to put everything on our hook onto a new band. And so that brings extra room for us to repeat. So... is what it should look like which is similar I can't remember exactly oops which bracelets we've done this with but it has been done before okay so depending on your color rendition I chose to have mine uh, I liked how Lumer from Norway did hers she made her border the same as the perimeter. So I guess we could go up and finish this. Um, and I do care for loomers that are, are new. So instead of just saying finish it up and you'll know what to do, I say we just finish it up and then we meet back on this side. We'll quickly start that one and finish that. All right, so we have one side of our bracelet complete if you are adding the border. Uh, one thing I did want to point out is because I have thick bands, um, silicone bands, and eight millimeter heavy gauge jump rings. It is uh, it's nice and snug on here, but if you don't want your bands or your jump rings to maybe mumble up like that, uh, it this might help if you take and you slide each one of these jump rings down over that loom part it's like a little knot on our bracelet that might actually help keep them in place unless you go ahead and stretch your bracelet out but otherwise they're just in between those knots but it's just something I was just looking at um, I, I know they keep, I mean, I'm going like this on mine and they're keeping right in place. So they just normally kind of sit in between that one looped band, but if you just take it and slide it down, each one of them over that little knot, um, and I'm only, this is only for the ones that want to keep it without the border. I mean, it's a complete waste of time to fix all of those if you're going to add the border because you have to grab the jump ring anyhow. But I just wanted to show you that just in case you did want to keep it. Okay, so going to start. Um, well, we ended at our um, C-clip and all I did was add another band and then did a slip knot and then put that one piece in the C clip. Okay, so if we turn this upside down and then we loom from the top down, we're most likely going, I don't believe that either one of these have like a, a specific side, but we'll loom it as if it is. So again, it's the same thing. You just wanna add uh, chain three And then you come down. This time we'll go down through because we're going down the bracelet. And then through the jump ring and the first loop on your hook. And close it up. And then the last band is to grab all three loops and close it up. And then grab your next jump ring. And do the same. I am so thrilled over this bracelet. The colors I call, I have a disease, I call it color combo syndrome. <laughs> and 
Like, I'll seriously wait. It'll take me, like, sometimes, it took me two days to try to figure out what in the heck colors to make this bracelet for the tutorial. And, uh, super happy with how it turned out. How did I do this? Alright, so let's finish that up and then just for a couple seconds we'll meet back at the end and look at the Oh result. boy, oh boy, we are completely done. I am loving this. This is gorgeous. It really is. Here is the back. It lays flat. I love it. Great job, Bloomer from Norway, and thank you for allowing me to um, do a tutorial on another one of your fabulous designs. So guys, please make sure that you hashtag um, Now and Forever Bracelet uh, on Instagram. And please let us see your renditions. Uh, if, if I'm in love with this one, I can almost guarantee that yours is going to be um, even more beautiful. So we'd love to see them and see what kind of color combos and bead combos you come up with. So again, remember, if you are wanting to put it back to the original off the loom bracelet, all you gotta do is take apart the two bands out of that C-clip and take that border off and then you have another whole bracelet. So two bracelets in one, fabulous. Thanks for watching and stick around because we got some pretty cool ones coming up. Bye-bye.